Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to play episode one in a new campaign game with By Stealth and Sea, the 2020 war game from Dan Versen Games that covers the missions conducted by Italian commando frogmen units in World War II. The basic premise is they would ride devices that carried torpedoes into Allied harbors, the Algiers, Alexandria, and Gibraltar, and try to blow up Allied shipping. Now, if all goes well, this will be a nine-mission campaign. If it doesn't go well, it'll be a lot shorter. But let's jump in now and get started with our first mission. Before we start in on the action, let's do a little bit of an overview of the game. Now, I mentioned there are nine missions in this campaign. Now, we, we might not complete them all. If we run out of commandos, we will not be able to complete every mission, and the campaign would end early. But hopefully, we can avoid that fate. Now, we're looking at the map here of Gibraltar, which is one of the three locations that missions can be uh, executed in the game. And uh, it's a rough, kind of dirt simple approach. These down in the south are our three SLCs. Now, these were the units that basically, uh, what would happen is you had a torpedo with a harness kind of contraption that sat on top of it, and then two commandos would ride atop that torpedo. Their mission is to avoid all of the harbor defenses, weave their way forward to some one of these targets up here, attach the torpedo to it, have it detonate, and then escape without being captured or killed. That's the rough goal for every single mission. Now, on the right-hand side, we can see this row of uh, boxes here, which lists the harbor defenses. And at the very beginning of this campaign, for the first mission that we're on, the harbor defenses are actually at their lowest level. So we don't have an underwater dive team, there are no shore-based mortars, and the patrol crafts and the searchlights are relatively ineffective. So that's good for us. However, as we'll see in a moment, each one of these SLCs has characteristics and has technology improvements that you can make to them. Our SLCs are at their lowest level as well, as are our operator crews. They have no experience. So unlike in the historical campaigns, with this custom campaign scenario series that we're playing, you only get upgrades when you earn them by successfully reaching victory points in games, in missions. And the way we're trying to get victory points is we can get victory points in three ways. The first way is to sink a ship, in which case we get the victory point uh, total that's attached to it. Our three big targets here are the Renown, the Barum, and then the Furious, which are worth 10, 10, and 7 points respectively. All of these military ships, which we can see are kind of behind this wall and these torpedo nets, are worth more points, three points here. Then we have some, have some less lucrative targets worth one point, some cargo ships outside the mole, which would provide us with only one victory point, but it doesn't really require us to go into this more dangerous harbor area and try to get across these torpedo nets here too. We get the victory point total if we sink a ship. That's one way to get it. The second way we get victory points is if our crew survives the mission. So if we can scuttle the craft and the crew escapes without getting captured or killed, we get one victory point. Lastly, if we can avoid the SLC units, in particular each one of these getting captured, or uh, and we can successfully scuttle them, we also get a victory point. And that brings to kind of a, a little bit of the kind of the strategy that I'm thinking to approach this particular mission with. In order for us to improve our technology on our SLCs and to kind of make the um, subsequent missions a little bit easier, our first upgrade comes at four victory points. Now, if we can get inside the harbor and sink a warship, that's great. We can sink some cargo, ship, cargo ships, that's great. But unfortunately, as we'll see when the mission starts, the equipment on these SLCs is at the bare bottom. It's th These are going to break, our, and they break right before the mission even starts. So this first mission is really hard because all your stuff is constantly breaking, and then you have people trying to kill you at the same time. With that in mind, one of our goals for this mission is going to be try to get four victory points no matter how we do it. If we can get into the harbor and sink ships, that's great. But we can get six victory points by scuttling these three SLCs and having our crews escape. So if our crews get in trouble and it looks like they're going to get wiped out, we might opt for an early scuttle on whichever SLC would be in danger. 
So that's a rough overview of how the game works. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have our starting conditions. Then we're going to check to see what uh, element on the SLC may have or may or may not have broken in between the, for that turn and the next turn. Then we're going to take some actions with our SLCs. Then we're going to activate this harbor defense sequence where we're going to work through from top to bottom all the differences, uh, defenses that the harbor can throw at us. Once that's done, we're going to reset and we're going to work our way through these 12 turns down here, hopefully getting to a point where we can get our crew off and perhaps even doing some damage to British shipping. So with that being said, let's take a look now at our SLCs to see how they work and then we'll get started on the action. The next thing to kind of understand a little bit, the next thing to understand is how these SLC mats work. And we have one of these mats for each one of the three SLCs in the mission. And every mission will start with three SLCs. If you don't have enough operator crews to start a mission, the campaign ends and you get your victory point total at that point in time. So as we're looking at right here, we can see that this is the SLC for SLC number three. And this represents both the device that has the torpedo on it, kind of the harness and riding system, as well as the operators of the SLC. And there's a few things to talk about for these. The first is that every SLC will have two operators. We can see here Duran de la Pene and Bianchi are our operators right here. And now underneath that, we can see on this white section here some of their attributes and some of their skill points. However, for the custom campaign game, we ignore these. Everybody starts with only level one. So in order for our operators to increase their skills, they can do one of two things. First of all, they have to survive the mission, obviously, but there's one of two ways they can get experience points. One way is by penetrating the inner harbor, by getting inside those torpedo nets. If they do that and they survive the mission and escape, they will get one experience point, and that's good. The second way to do it is by blowing up a British ship. If they blow up a ship, they also get an experience point, and that an experience point, and that's the second way they can get one. Now, if they penetrate the inner harbor and they blow up a ship, they only get one experience point. The most experience points you can get on a mission is one. So, and how that works is once they've got an experience point, we can take one of their four attributes here, either pilot, operations, repair, or stamina, and instead of it being a one, it goes up to a two. The highest level they can reach for something is a three. And this allows them, basically these skills level, skill levels indicate how many dice you can toss to perform a skill check of that category. So if Duran de la Pena and Bianche had reached level two for their repair check, when they have a repair check on their equipment, instead of just throwing one die, they can throw two dice. And that's a helpful thing because it gives you two chances to pass that check rather than one. So one of our other goals for this mission, if possible, would be to see if we can get one of our crews some advances to their attributes. Now, that honestly that's going to be fairly difficult i think in this mission but we'll, we'll see what happens now along those lines uh, as we did with submarine monday i'd like to collect volunteers if you're interested in volunteering to be one of the operators on these crews drop your names down in the comments and we'll get you involved i am going to start out relatively soon we're going to take the waiting list from the previous submarine mondays from silent victory and then the hunters and those people will have priority, but they have to claim their spot basically by posting a comment down below in the comments saying, yep, I'm in. And we'll take the top six people off the waiting list and we'll cycle them in for the, for the second mission next week. Also, if you were on already on the crew of the Hunters on the Skipjack or on our U-boat in the Hunters, uh, I'm going to just kind of add you to the bottom of the waiting list this time. Uh, let me know is, you know, kind of confirm that as well. Say I'm definitely in. We'll probably need about 20 people over the course of the campaign and don't expect glory these operators had lives that were fairly short and brutal uh, it's the odds are you won't make it through a particular mission so I'm you know it's it's uh it's it's kind of hard work let me just put it that way so that's how we'll run the volunteers for that and where our first operator crews are up for this mission we'll use the ones from the game this way now the second thing that we have to talk a little bit about on these SLC mats are these other categories here. And this top right side basically represents the functionality of the, the operator's gear, the breathing gear and the wetsuit. And these little pieces that you drop on top of them indicate that they're functioning fine. Now we might get, depending on if we can increase the quality of our equipment, we might get more little counters dropped on top of these. But for right now, what it means is if something happens and we lose that counter, sort of like there's a fault or it breaks or something like that, it tells 
tells us what we have to do and other bad things happen if we don't pass that check. So we want these little pieces sitting on top of the gear in order to indicate that it's functioning properly. Likewise, of a similar way, this, these pieces down here indicate the status of the SLC harness and the torpedo. The red one is for the torpedo itself. And we're gonna have to detach the harness from the torpedo, attach it to a ship, and then blow it up. And so that's kind of a process that goes on. If this is missing, that means the warhead has been removed or it's fallen off or it's detached or something's gone wrong with the warhead. Likewise, we have battery, ballast tank, and transmission, our other three pieces here, and various bad things happen if these were to break. Now in the battery, we do have two pieces, which is helpful because that means it can withstand one kind of uh, misfunction before it's still, uh, it, and it can still be functioning. We have to have it misfunction twice before there's a problem with it. So that's basically a roughly how these devices work, and we'll see more of how they go, how they work as we get into the game and we start to see things break and stuff like that. The very first phase in a mission is what's called the forward positioning phase. And this basically simulates how badly or how well things have gone before you really get in view of the target and kind of the harbor itself. There are four cards that are in the game for this. We start with the lowest level card. So basically simulating that a lot of things are gonna go wrong before we ever got to the mission start. We can upgrade these cards with technology improvements and it is one that we might look at fairly soon because the default kind of forward positioning card is what's called La Spizia. La Spezia, excuse me, and these aren't very good because if we see down here under fault check, it says perform two fault checks for each SLC before beginning the mission. That means it's likely that one or two things have gone wrong with our kind of devices before we even get there. To simulate that, we're gonna pick two fault cards for each one of our SLCs, and here is the first one. Single warhead inflatable. So our warhead is broken. We're gonna to have to drop this off to the side now, remove the warhead and put it there. However, there's a repair check. So if we use a single six-sided die, and if we succeed at this repair check and roll a six, that means that we have successfully avoided this, bro this kind of problem with the warhead ring and the warhead fault, and the warhead will still be functional on our Craft. If we don't succeed, we're going to have to fix this before we can use the warhead in the mission. So let's perform that repair check right now. It's unlikely. We need a six to be able to fix it, and we got a four, so that doesn't happen. So this uh, SLC-1 and Tese and Pedretti will start with a problem with their warhead already. Let's draw our second card and see what misfortune has also impacted this. We've got a wetsuit fault. This is not good because if we fail the wetsuit fault, basically simulating a problem with the wetsuit, our crew's gonna start off as stunned, which means they only have one action point instead of two action points, and this is a very bad thing. Let's hope we can pass this check. Unfortunately, we have one die roll. It's a repair check of a five. Let's see what we get. Come on, guys, fix your wetsuits. A four. God, okay, so we remove this little blue token here. Fail means we discard the token and this card from the game. So the web suit is permanently broken and that immediately stuns our crew and they're down to one action point. They will be able to try to recover, but it's kind of a tough roll here. So um, yeah, that's not a good start for SLC1. Let's check out SLC2 now. All right, let's perform our repair checks for S our fault checks for SLC2. Hopefully we don't get as bad as SLC1. That's a tough hit for them. We get the SLC ballast tank, a repair check of six. So the ballast tank basically means we cannot submerge. That's not good. A repair check is a six. Let's see what we get. Get a three. Nope, that didn't work. So the ballast tank is broken. Now this is repairable. We'll probably need to repair that because submerging makes it very much makes it much harder for the enemy to find us. But for the moment, that'll stick there. Let's see what our second fault is. Breathing gear fault. <clears throat> Great. Okay, so we need a repair check of six for this one. We've got a, can't see it there, five. Nope, that doesn't work. So the breathing gear, the surge token is removed, and we discard this in the card from the game. This means that repair check, uh, stamina checks are at a minus one dice roll. So that's um, that's not good. I mean, that we can still function and stuff like that, but it's going to be harder to make some of our repair checks. 
Let's see what happens to SLC, SLC3 now. All righty, SLC, SLC3 picks their first fault card, and oh, goodness. You know, the, the battery, by the way, has two items on it, so we could have one thing go wrong with the battery and we're perfectly fine. However, we seem to be getting hitting, hit once again with these devastating ones. In the practice mission I ran, we got wetsuit faults, and those are pretty catastrophic. Repair check of five, let's make it, guys. Three, nope, okay, so the wetsuit's gone. That one's there, and that means that our crew is stunned, and they still have another problem. This may be a very short mission. We're not doing very well. Uh, SLC battery fault, repair check six. Oh, that would be actually not too bad to get. We got a one, so the battery is gone, but it's still okay, because it's still got one token on it, so that's a good one to get. Discard this card and one token from the game. Nevertheless, at the end of our SLC rounds, before the mission even starts, we have two crews stunned, we have a warhead broken, we've got a ballast tank not working, and we have some breathing apparatus gone on another one of our crews. So, yeah, uh, uh, this is kind of a rough start for us, but <laughs> we'll drive on. You may be thinking all the bad news is over. However, as we come into this first turn, every turn starts with a fault check phase which means we have one more check to perform. We're gonna roll a die to tell us which LC, SLC has yet another fault to start out our very first turn. It is SLC one that has another fault. So let's draw another fault card for SLC one. See what we get. We get the transmission fault. Ah, so we need to perform an immediate repair check needing a six. Otherwise the transmission's gone on SLC one. Ah. Yes, we got a six. So we pass that and everything is good. Place also to get back on the card and discard the card. So finally, so Tesse and Padretti were able to perform a repair check and that all worked out fine. Excellent. So now we're gonna head into our first move, which is uh, the SLCs finally get to do something. And you'll notice here, the harbor is up basically in the top part here. We have SLC-1 with its directional marker pointed this way. I'm thinking to send this at cargo ships. SLC-2 is gonna try to head for this torpedo net up here, although we may swing it to the cargo ships depending on how well or how badly things go. The initial plan was for SLC-3 to try to get to the cargo net up here, the torpedo net up there, but it's in pretty rough shape with uh, broken wetsuits. So, yeah, we'll see what we're gonna do. So let's figure out what our actions are gonna be. We might try to repair stuff before the harbor defenses kick in. So SLC-1 is basically, this is Tesse and Pedretti. They are stunned and their warhead's broken. Uh, we're on the surface. Now, when you're stunned, you only have one action point instead of two. I think it's gonna be critical to try to get them to have to, to recover from this. So we're gonna perform the recover action, action on them, which basically means, it means we make a stamina check roll and we need a five or a six. This sounds risky, but I just don't think they're gonna be able to do much with only one action point. We kinda need them to recover from this. So hoping for a five or a six to get them to recover, a three. So nothing happens to them, they do not recover. SLC2 has the two problems here of the ballast tank, which means we can only operate on the surface, and then this breathing gear, which is permanently broken and provides a minus one to our stamina check. Because being on the surface is extraordinarily dangerous, I think we need to try to be able to submerge. So we could perform a die roll repair check with a one die roll. However, we can use all two of our action points to automatically fix the ballast tank. And that's what we're gonna do. So we get this back and we discard the card. So that one's gone. So the only thing wrong now with SLC2 and Brindelli and Pacagnini is that the breathing gear isn't working. But that's not a significantly big problem, I think, at this point. So this SLC2 is looking fairly hopeful that it might actually be able to do something. SLC3 has the same stamp, the wetsuit problem that SLC1 has. They're going to try to spend their action point to try to recover. We need a roll of a five or a six to be successful at it, but I don't see how they're gonna succeed in their mission being completely stunned. So hoping for a five or a six, two, they fail. All right, so now it's time for us to see how the harbor defenses start to react to us, whether they detect us and whether they find us and start hunting us down. There's a number of systems that aren't in place yet. We're gonna kind of work through them in order, 
but as the defenses get better in subsequent missions, this will get harder and a little bit more complicated. However, right now, we have searchlights and patrol craft that can kind of come after us. We're going to start with the searchlights, and we can see here that it means basically a surfaced is a 10 plus, a submerged is 11 plus. We, we kind of, for every one of our SLCs that have not been detected, we're going to pull on a card from the alert deck. If the number matches that number or is higher, then the SLC is detected and bad things start to happen. So first we're gonna draw for SLC one, then two, and then three. Here is our first alert clay. We're hoping now, because we're on the surface, for a nine or less. Ooh, we just made it, that's a nine. Let's go to SLC two now in the middle here. We've got a four, we're doing okay. These go up to 12 as a high. And SLC three, a three, excellent. So our luck is good with our SLC alert cards. So we've made it through the searchlight phase now. The next phase in the game is the patrol craft response phase. So basically this simulates the movement of patrol craft in the harbor. And what we do now is take a look at this next one. We are all on the surface and we are outside the harbor. So we're gonna use these top two, this top line, which means surfaced and outside the harbor uh, and we are undetected at this point. So we need a nine or greater to be detected and to have a patrol craft respond to our situation. So once again, we're hoping for eights or less. SLC one, it's a five. Excellent. This is going fairly well so far. SLC two, this is our functional one. I'm hopeful they don't get detected. Ah, God. 12. And this has a special condition which says remove the lowest number cards from the discard pile, maximum of six, and shuffle the deck. So we're going to take that three out that we pulled before. I'll shuffle the deck. This one is detected, which means that we immediately place one of the four patrol craft from the harbor right in front of SLC number two. And here they come. Let's roll. Uh, we have to, I'll redo the deck now, then we'll pick for our third SLC. All righty. So, uh, Basically, what we have to do now, too, is this simulates, this yellow marker simulates that SLC2 has been detected, so we drop that on it. Let's go to our third SLC3, see if that one gets detected, a six. So we are okay there. So all told, that's not too horrific, although SLC2 is kind of our only functioning craft at the moment. Let's, uh, we're gonna clean up this turn, which basically involves flipping over our patrol craft here, and then, uh, advancing the time token and we can check to see if any patrol craft have to be removed but they don't that's only if they've got we've covered a significant amount of distance between them so now it's time to move on to turn number two all right so we're in turn two the first thing we need to do is to start out with our fault check phase to see which one of our slcs has a problem slc number three draws a fault card let's see what we get for this we get the wetsuit fault, which is actually a pretty good pull for this one because the wetsuit is already broken on SLC3, so nothing happens in this fault phase and we can discard that card. Alrighty, so now it's time for us to take some actions and we have some immediate problems to deal with. The first is here that SLC2 has been detected and it's on the surface and there's a patrol craft right in front of it. Now we could try to dive, but it involves basically a 50% chance that it will fail or 50% chance that it will succeed. And then move. I think what we're gonna do with SLC2 is actually to spend all of its two movement points and have it dive and submerge. And basically what this means is that this patrol craft is going to attack this turn. It's probably gonna move forward. It's the closest SLC to us, to it. It's gonna move, it's gonna attack, it needs to draw an alert card of 10 or greater, which would stun it. So we're gonna to have to hope that it doesn't pull that, but by being submerged, we're a much more difficult target. If we survive that, the next turn we could move forward a couple and escape detection by losing that detected marker. So with that being said, let's now go to what actions we might wanna take with SLC1 and SLC3. Both of these operators are still stunned, and I think what we need to try to do with them is to see if we can get them unstunned, because they're, they're just not gonna function. Yeah, they're just not gonna function if they're at a stunned level. Let's think for a second. Yeah, I think our roles really have to be to try to uh, perform that stamina check and get them 
back up and functioning. So SLC1 is going to try to perform a stamina check to see if it can overcome being stunned and recover. Now it's going to spend its one action point to do that. It needs to roll a five or greater. Yes, excellent. So we are going to off camera flip over their operator card to the blue side and SLC1 is now no longer stunned. Let's try the same thing with SLC3. See if we can get lucky here. Ah, four. No, so SLC3 is still stunned. SLC1 is recovered and SLC2 has dived. Let's go now to our harbor defenses. So our first element is we have to do searchlight spotting on SLC1, 2, and well, 2's already been detected, so we don't pull a searchlight card for that. So we're gonna pull searchlights for SLC1. The rating is because they're on the surface, they need a 10 or greater to spot us. They get a two, so SLC1 stays undetected. Let's try SLC3, who are sitting stunned and whatnot. They get a seven, excellent. So we pass the searchlight phase without any further damage. Now we come into the patrol craft response phase. We have to draw to see what happens with our patrol caps, craft picking up on SLC1, two, and three. They are, SLC1 first is on the surface and it is undetected and it is at it's not it's outside of the harbor so a nine plus would mean a patrol craft spots it let's see what we get nice we got a three excellent let's go to slc2 so slc2 is now submerged but it has been detected it's outside of the harbor so an eight plus would give a second patrol craft appearing at the scene to work on that one Ooh, that's not good 10. So a patrol craft number two appears on the scene. It is exhausted by approaching us, so it will be not functional this turn, but it could be functional next turn. Let's go now to SLC3. SLC3 is outside the harbor. It's on the surface and it has not been detected yet. They need a nine or better to spot us. Another seven, so that's okay. So all the attention of the British patrol craft being paid to SLC2, our highest functional um, SLC craft, although SLC one now is in pretty good shape. Okay, so we are done with that. Now it's time for the patrol craft movement phase. It's very simple because this patrol craft number one is going to move towards its closest detective target up to two hexes, which is right here. So it is now on top of our submerged SLC, which is still in a detected status. That's the end of the movement because this one is exhausted. Now we come to the moment of truth, the patrol craft attack phase. Because SLC1 is in the same square as SLC, because the patrol craft one is in the same square as SLC2, it gets to attack it. Now here's the chart we need. We are submerged, so we need a 10 plus to avoid the attack. If it does hit us, our crew is stunned, which would be bad. This is very important. This is like the, I think the whole mission kind of hinges on this. Oh, nice. Six. Excellent. So the attack is unsuccessful on SLC2, and because we are submerged, I think we'll be able to escape at the end of this turn. So now we're going to clean up this turn. Basically, what we're going to do is we flip over the exhausted craft that just showed up to being on target on on the scene. We advance the time marker to the 1 to 130 time of the mission, and then we see if any patrol craft need to be removed. They would have to be four hexes away or more. They're not. So these two patrol craft stay on the scene. They are actively engaged with hunting us down. Let's go to turn number three. Alrighty, for turn number three, the first thing we have to do is to see what else is broken on our SLCs. Let's roll for on this SLC die. SLC number three, that's the crew that's still stunned. That's not good. Let's see what breaks for them. We'll draw a fault card. Be kind to us, please. Battery fault. Oh, that's not good because they already had a battery fault. Okay. And if the battery, I think, breaks this time, it means they cannot move at all. It might be time for them to abandon ship and to give up and to see if we can scuttle their, their SLC. But let's first see if we get lucky here and can repair this. We need a six for an immediate repair. Yeah, four, we fail. So that means our second battery token is removed, doing that off screen. And I believe we can't repair that now because it's discarded from the game. So SLC three, is immobile for the rest of the game. Gah, okay, not a good start to turn number three. Alrighty, so now it's our time to act. SLC1, as we can see, is actually doing in pretty good shape. It's got a warhead fault that it could fix later. 
Wetsuit's not functional, but they've recovered to the point now they have two action points. I think it's going to make sense for them to try to submerge and then get out of here and move towards those cargo ships or perhaps even the harbor. So we're going to spend two action points to automatically make sure we succeed at submerging. So SLC-1 dives. Now SLC-2 is the one that's got the patrol craft hunting on it and it is submerged. Um, but it is already detected. However, one of the things about a full move with Submerge is we can do an automatic success, and it's basically move the SLC straight ahead two spaces in the direction it's facing, as indicated by the arrow in the top of the counter. If there's a detected token on the SLC, remove it from the game board. So that's a good move, I think, for SLC 2. We'll get this one off here. So it's going to move straight ahead two squares. These are a little wider than my clippers here up here go underneath the patrol boats because it's submerged and then it loses its detection marker so we'll get rid of that and that leaves none of our SLC's detected at the moment so that's good now SLC 3 has got major problems the crew is stunned because of a wetsuit failure the battery's completely broken so it can't move for the rest of the scenario this th there's nothing we can do with this right it's got it, it hasn't it's gone nowhere and it's broken so what i think we need to try to do is to scuttle this unfortunately because the crew is stunned scuttling is not an automatic action we have one action point to succeed we have to roll an uh, perhaps an ops check and an ops check of four basically means we need to roll a four or higher which would automatically scuttle this craft and then we would see if Duran de la Pene and Bianchi can escape successfully and be recovered by Italian uh, support units nearby. So we're hoping for a four or greater with this die roll. Let's get out of here. Come on, let's scuttle. This is actually worth one victory point, too. Gah, it's a two. It's tough to see there, but not what we wanted. Okay, so nothing happens there. They fail, and they're still floundering around on the surface, stunned and their SLC can't move anymore. So that's the end of our turn. Now it's time to go once again to the harbor defense cycle. Let's slide over here and see what we've got. We're gonna start out with our harbor defenses on the searchlights. Now SLC one is submerged, so instead of needing a 10 or greater, it needs an 11 or greater to be spotted. They get an eight, that's safe. Likewise, SLC two is not detected. It's, un it's, uh, it's underwater submerged and it needs an 11 to be spotted. We get a seven, we're good there. SLC three, which fortunately, despite all its problems, has not been spotted yet, would need a 10 or better. If it does draw a 10 or better, they're probably going to die. I hate to say this. We get ah, six, nice, okay. This means now that we go to the patrol craft response element. We have three checks to make one again. Let's check uh, SLC number one. This one is we are submerged and we are not detected. So they would need a 10 or greater to detect SLC number one. Ooh, we just pass it, we get a nine. Likewise, SLC number two needs a 10 or greater. Oh, that's not good. They just seem to find SLC two all the time. So it's detected. That means another patrol boat shows up and it's just at the north edge of our screen. We'll just slide that up. So the third patrol craft has detected SLC-2. It must be like painted orange or something. What's going on, guys? Where's your camouflage? SLC-3 is on the surface. It needs a 10 or greater to be detected. And that's detected, too. So our fourth and final patrol craft shows up on the scene right in front of SLC-3. It's going to have one more chance. Oh, they've been detected, too. Oh, that's not good, right? This is like very bad. Oh, this is bad all around, right? Because they're not only there, they are. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna get pummeled now. Okay, uh, time to go to the patrol craft movement phase and let's sort that out. All right, so the movement's actually relatively straightforward. These two just showed up, so they are exhausted status. They do not move. Patrol craft two, basically the patrol craft moved to their closest detected target. Patrol craft two is gonna move on top of SLC two. To that one in patrol craft number one, moving on top of SLC one, which is, oops, we don't exhaust them, sorry. Flip those back over. And this is not good because they are stunned already. So that means if they get hit, they're killed. Uh, likewise, this is uh, somewhat hopeful. We hope that they can survive through this. And so now we transition into the attack phase. 
Let's do the attack by patrol craft number two on SLC two num first here. Because it's submerged, what do we need here? Attack, submerge it needs a 10 or greater to hit it. Hopefully not. Ooh, six. Okay, so we're okay there. However, patrol craft SLC number three is in much more dire straits. A successful attack, it's on the surface, it's just sitting there, it can't move. If we pull a seven or greater, it's hit and if it's hit, because the crew's already stunned, they are killed. So the fate of SLC-3 once again hangs in this card pull. And at this dramatic moment, we're going to pause and end this episode. We'll be back next week to learn the fate of the crew of SLC-3. Things are looking rather dire with the patrol craft bearing down on them and attacking and another one lurking in the shadows. They're stunned, their battery's broken so their SLC doesn't move and they were fumbling about trying to scuttle their craft but they didn't succeed. What will happen to the crew of SLC-3? Tune in next week to Submarine Monday to find out the fate of this crew. In the meantime, if you are interested in volunteering to be an operator on one of our SLCs, drop your name down in the comments below. And again, we'll be using the existing order from the waiting list from our last Silent Victory episode. But we're going to need a lot of people, so I'm pretty sure that everybody's on the current waiting list is going to get in. You'll probably be able to take another half dozen people as well. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, please consider subscribing. And we'll see you next week for the culmination of this episode. I do think going forward, I'm going to try to get the missions down to one episode. We won't have to do as much explaining, so I think that's possible. I can also probably do a few things to speed them up. See you next week, everybody. Bye.